Alright, let's see if we can break the game. I don't know if this works on Genova, but I do know it works on Bizarro. But I also don't know if you need W magic or not, so we'll find out. If it doesn't happen, then we'll just beat the game. Where are we? Squeak! What? What? Genova! It's coming! And now my favorite battle music of all time. It always gets me pumped up. I love it so much. Alright, let's see what happens. We didn't break. So it either doesn't work on Genova or we need Debbie Magic. So we'll try it again on Sephiroth. Uh, also, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Swing. I wanted to talk a little bit about how these final bosses work, but I'll wait until the next part. Because there's actually a lot of cool little things that happen during these fights. Cow that damage. Actually, can we, uh, oh, never mind. He, she gone. Is this... is this light holy? Ah, dang, man! Barret? What? So everyone's together again? Ugh! So do you guys think that this thing we're looking at, I always just kind of thought it's like the core of the planet or something, but uh, the inside I think is supposed to be holy. So do you think this red thing around holy is like Sephiroth's creation? Like this is his, he's blocking off holy with this like red goo. Yeah, I never, I didn't really put two and two together, but that makes sense, right? Severoth! Ugh, is this the true power of Sephiroth? My, my body, I can't control my body! Ugh! 
My front legs, my hind legs, my tail's about to tear off. This is definitely not good. He's way out of our league. I, I don't know if I can go on. Cloud, cloud. Ugh, ugh. There, it's there. Cloud? Holy, holy is there. The holy is shining. Eris's prayer is shining. Holy, Eris. It's not over yet. This isn't the end yet. What a great epic monologue there. And the characters you pick also get monologues. Also, we're splitting into two groups. So I wanted to quickly talk about uh, all the, the hidden mechanics in this end game. Because it's really interesting and I get a lot of questions about it. So uh, first of all, Bizarro Sephiroth. There's three different Bizarro Sephiroths you can get. Uh, there's the one party, the two party, and the three party. Uh, if there's one party, then you just fight him like normal. You have to take out his arms in order to attack the core. And then when you beat the core, he dies or he stops healing. And you have to kill his body to actually kill him. Uh, then there's the two party where you need to kill parts on each party's side before you can do damage to the core. And then kill the stomach with either party to kill him. And then three parties, which is the same thing. You have to beat the parts on each side. Um, and there's a bunch of different stipulations as to which ones you get. Uh, to get the one party situation, uh, Genova Synthesis must have taken 13 turns or more before the countdown, before her countdown started, which her countdown starts when she's at like 10,000 HP or something. Um, the lowest level character in the party is level 34 or lower, not including Aerith. Um, or Yuffie or Vincent if you didn't get them. Or the average party it, uh, party level is 53 or less. Uh, to get the two party situation, you have to not do any of those that we just mentioned. And you also either need Yuffie, Vincent, or both not to be obtained. The lowest level party... A uh, character in the party has to be 44 or lower, or the average party has to be 67 or lower. And then for the three-party situation, you have to not meet any of those, and also you need both Yuffie and Vincent. Genova Synthesis uh, took 12 turns or fewer before Ultima. The lowest level character in the party is 45 or higher, or the average party level is 68 or higher. So there's a bunch of different things that go into it. Um, the easiest way to ensure that you get the easiest Bizarro fight is to just let Genova take 13 turns before dealing damage to her. Uh, that's usually what I do when I'm like playing casually and I don't want to do the crazy Bizarro fight, is I'll just let Genova Synthesis take 13 turns. That way I always get the easiest Bizarro fight. Um, so that's the way Bizarro works. And then, uh, in addition, the statistics of Bizarro Sephiroth's stats are different. Uh, the main body has 40,000 HP, but it gets plus 5,000 for each character you have that's level 99. And it also gets 60,000 total if Knights of the Round was used on Genova Synthesis. Its head has 2,000 HP, but gets plus 250 for each character at 99. The core has 10,000 HP, but gets plus 1,250 for each character at 99. And the right and left magics have 4,000 HP, but get 500 extra for each character at level 99. So total maximum, he could have 180,000 HP, or total minimum, he could have 60,000 HP. So there's a lot, there's a lot of like little tiny things that go into the stats. So they tried to like balance it based on how much you've grinded. Now, if you're level 99, these bonuses don't really mean a ton, but it is kind of cool that they balanced it a bit. So you can't, you usually don't like one shot them. Uh, and then Safer Sephiroth also has some mechanics that are hidden. Uh, for every character at level 99, not including Aerith, he gets 30,000 maximum HP, 2 attack, 20 defense, 5 magic attack, and 16 magic defense. Uh, if Knights of the Round was used on Genova Synthesis, he gets an additional 80,000 maximum HP, which is a lot. <laughs> And for every time Bizarro Sephiroth's head was killed during the previous fight, his maximum HP is reduced by 100, up to a maximum of 24,900, which is a really weird mechanic. The more you kill, the more damage you do to, Safer, uh, to Bizarro Sephiroth's head, the less HP Safer Sephiroth has. 
which is kind of weird. But I guess they did that maybe so the fight didn't drag on as long. Like if you took a really long time to figure out the Bizarro mechanic, then Safer Sephiroth's fight is shorter. Maybe that's the reasoning. So yeah, pretty interesting stuff. They, they really put a lot of thought into these final fights. It's not just, here's the stats, you know. Old Bento, thank you for the 14. <laughs> Thanks, my man. So let's do... Uh... Well, let's do our main party. I'm still trying to break the game, so I'm not going to take that long to figure stuff out. Zydrix for everyone. Now you'll never die. premium heart. Sure, why not? Good enough. Duh! No way we're gonna lose. I'm going to see it through to the end for our future and that of the planet. I understand now, Grandpa. This is my mission. I won't let the life stream or the life of the planet wither away. I love these monologues. Eris is here. Everyone is here. Cloud is here with us. There's still many things for us to do. I'm not giving up. Eris's memories, our memories. We came to tell you our memories. Come, planet, show us your answer. And Sephiroth, to the settling of everything. A lot of people's favorite song. Um. Alright, let's see if it works. If not, we'll just do it later. This is the Ulta, uh, the Quadra Magic Ultima Bug. <laughs> uh, what happens is when you use Quadra Magic Ultima, and it's also attached to MP Absorb and HP Absorb, there's a lot of calculations that the game needs to do, and a lot of numbers that the game needs to hold. Um, and now that I think of it, I remember why specifically W Magic doesn't matter, because W Magic is two separate calculations, so it doesn't actually help to break it. Um, but long story short, if you attack an enemy with a lot of parts, like uh, Bizarro Sephiroth has five parts, the game tries to hold all the damage you're doing to all the parts, as well as all the HP and MP that you're absorbing from each part, and it basically runs out of space to put numbers. So, it's trying to remember all these numbers for all four casts, and it just runs out of space. So, this happens. It just stops. And it's not a hard lock. I can still do stuff. But, as soon as I put in these attacks, the game will just be over. And nothing will happen. It's still trying to cast Ultima, but it doesn't know where to put the numbers. So, 
that be it. <laughs> and uh, the two most popular fights you can do this on are him and Emerald Weapon, because Emerald Weapon has the four eyes. It happens to people all the time with Emerald Weapon, because Quadra Magic Ultima is a pretty solid strat against Emerald Weapon. But if you're smart enough to equip three Ultimas with HP and MP Absorb, you can run into this. So it's actually a pretty common glitch that happens to people. Um, but yeah, completely soft locks the game. And I don't know if we can soft lock because, or uh, soft reset because we're in a fight. But yeah, like everything's still working, you know? <laughs> it's just the game doesn't know where to go. All right, now we win for real. There's no way we're gonna lose. Uh, never mind. I guess we lost. <laughs> yep, we get to hear Genova Absolute again, so it's worth it. Also, I might go ahead and let Genova take the extra turns so I can show you how that strat works. And also, there's another thing I wanted to show with Bizarro Sephiroth if you're doing the one-party fight. It's not that exciting, but... Might as well show it, right? <laughs> that was me public speaking. Just standing there and saying nothing. Yep, you can get two party or three party. And like I said, with the two and three party fight, it's actually a really fun fight because you have to kill the magics on each side and then swap. And then once all the magics are dead, you can start hitting the core. And then once the core is dead, you can hit the stomach and win. It's pretty interesting. Um, you can win without swapping, though. Which I'll show. Oh, I forgot to grab the items. Oh, well. We don't need them. Um, yeah, you can win without swapping. If you do enough damage. The reason you swap is because if you don't swap, you can't kill the core. And if you don't kill the core, he does that big heal every couple turns. Or, like, pretty much every other turn. Oh, I didn't know that, Pefren. The two-party Bizarro has an AI glitch where he just spams Dem I3. That's interesting. Do you have to set it up, or is it just, if you get that fight, that's what he does? No, my second misdial. Zydric Tuffering. This dude ain't going nowhere. I don't think there's anything more fun we can do. Actually, let's do... We already have Master Magic MP Turbo, so I guess we could just leave it like this. Oh, 
don't need the Zydrick. That's no fun. Do the Gigas Armlet for the damage. Holy cow, you have so many slots. What are we going to do with all these slots? putting on random stuff. <laughs> Honestly, uh... Underwater material will help, right? I feel like underwater material is the play here. I don't have counter. I can't do counter death blow. Kind of like a lame. For some reason, you can get Alec mains. The Iron Giants and the Dragon Zombies are much scarier. Um, 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 um. Yeah, all, almost every glitch I've shown. If it works in this version, it works in every version, unless I've said otherwise. It's kind of funny, you would think the newer versions, less glitches would happen, but the truth is the newer versions have more glitches. The question is usually, if it works in those, does it work in this one? Not the opposite. Because <laughs> the, uh, the newer versions are all based on the Steam version, the Steam version is horribly broken. It's not that the code is worse, it's that the way that the PC version handles the game is worse. It's supposed to be better because it, it retains more information from module to module, but because it does, it leads to problems. And also, the menus work differently in the Steam version, and that causes a lot of problems too. Okay, fine, the code's worse. I'll try to be nice. Just trying to say it in a nice way, you know? Can you stop making Cloud mad? I'm trying to run away. Thanks. Give me a zombie, please. I want to get Pandora's box. That's not a- oh yeah, this is zombie, nice. Bum, 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 bum. How's it going, bug? Yeah, his attack's called Body Tail. I don't know what that's about. So yeah, this is the only time we'll ever see Pandora's box. And it hurts, because it goes through defense. So it's it's a pretty it's a beginner's trap for sure, the first time you see this attack. And because it's a death hit, it can uh, really screw you. You could be like have a cure queued up and he just does it because he died. He interrupts you and does it. Space punctuation attack! Uh, 
Uh, Pandora's box is just a really strong magic attack. It doesn't have like a special thing like question marks. But the gimmick behind it is that it ignores defense. Specifically magic defense. You'd think because it's a big question mark, it'd be some kind of special thing, but it's not. <laughs> oh, check out the power of Dragon Force. I don't even have... Um... Yo, subs! Thank you for the raid, my man. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for being here. Um... I need to throw X potions on her so she doesn't die. I don't even have the Zydric equipped, but two Dragon Forces will probably make Cloud take very little damage, yeah. So I actually need to, like, throw healing items on Genova <laughs> so that Cloud doesn't kill her. Cloud! Stop it! That's too much damage! Maybe I should use Dragon Force on her. Cloud, can you cool it? I'm not counting the turns. I'll just guesstimate. Stop! Cloud! Stop it. You must stop. We're just giving her a fighting chance. <laughs> no, we're uh, manipulating Bizarro Sephiroth so that we get the easiest fight. If you let Genova take 13 turns before getting her health down to the part where she starts counting down, then you'll always get the easiest Bizarro fight. Yeah, basically baby strats. Nope. If you do this strat, you'll always get the easiest fight, no matter what. Take that! Yeah, because the way it works is, like, there's a list of things, and you need to not do any of those things. So if you do even one of those things, it'll automatically give you the first... The, uh, the one party fight. I think it's been about 13 turns, but it's kind of hard to count because her tentacles also get turns. I think. I don't remember if her tentacles get turns or, uh, if she tells her tentacles to take turns, which is what Ruby does, so it's kind of weird. Yeah, we explained it just before you got here, Jay Alex. But basically, there's like a laundry list of things that causes the one, two, or three party fights, as well as a bunch of other things like stat increases and stuff. We could use Knights of the Round on Genova to give Safer Sephiroth a big boost in HP. We should do that, why not? 
mean, I'll send it. Uh, Dragon Force is like a hero drink, so I believe it never wears off unless you die, I think? It'll wear off if you die? Or after the fight. Yeah, the Genova Synthesis um, model is really cool. There's like a gross heart beating, and she looks like really neat looking. She looks like a super alien. Everything about this fight I love so much. I, I love the countdown to Ultima. I love her model. I love the fighting field. The song is my favorite battle theme of all time. This might be my favorite fight in the game. It's hard to say because I've always really liked Emerald Weapon's AI mechanic, but this fight really is awesome. That's probably 13, right? Probably way more than 13 at this point. Here you go. Have a Mega Elixir. You're gonna need it. I wish I had hero drinks. Oh well. Ooh, give her a nice Earth Rave. That'll be fun. Yeah, man, this song just always gets me hyped. There's something about it. I just, it always makes me want to play. If I hear it outside the game, I'm like, man, I want to, want to play. And back when I used to do any percent and new game plus speed runs, every time we got to this part, I was like excited, even though I've done it a hundred times. Like it still gets me excited. Yeah, Earth Rave isn't actually Earth Element. But Yuffie has an Earth Element limit, because reasons. But the move that it literally has Earth in the name isn't Earth. I think Earth might actually work on her anyways. There's a better look at her backside, by the way. Because I know you all like Genova's backside, let's be honest. That's what you're here for. Where's my booty? I was promised booty. <laughs> I always love the little attention to detail where the enemy actually dies before the summon animation's done. Knights of the Round is just so cool. Okay, so if she took 13 turns, we should get the one party fight now. And we should also get the super strong save for Sephiroth. And also, I think we said Bizarro also gets a boost, right? What's the boost that he gets? Oh, he gets 20,000 extra HP. Actually... No, 60,000 extra HP on top of his 40,000. So he has 100,000 now. That's a lot. That's quite the big boost. That's more than double his HP normally. So even though Knights of the Round is completely stupidly strong, they do attempt to make it so you can't one-shot the final bosses if they know you have it. It's weird that they say, like... Actually, it's kind of cool that they do it that way. Instead of just searching your inventory for Knights of the Round, they give you they give the bosses the bonus HP if you use it. So you can get it and not use it, and then you don't get penalized. Plus, I suppose they'd have to check for Master Summon, too, because there is a chance you have Master Summon and not Knights of the Round, like I have right now. It's Sephiroth. <laughs> Sorry, the alerts are still turned off. Because we had an incredible amount of support today. I can't thank you guys enough for all the support. 
It's been an amazing day. It's been a great day meeting a lot of new people as well. It's been really fun. Yep, one party. Mission accomplished. Yeah. yeah, it said make a party of three, not make three parties. Now we get to see Yuffie's text. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have come. I don't need materia any... Nope, I still want it. This and that and everything. Mine! And I'm never gonna give it up. What a great monologue. Just shows that she has no character development whatsoever. <laughs> but that's kind of her character, is that she doesn't have character development. Alright, so now we got the one party fight. And in the one party fight, he cures for about 7,000 every other turn, pretty much. Um, until you destroy the core. And in order to destroy the core, you have to destroy both magics to start dealing damage to the core. Uh, however, you can just burst the stomach if you can do more than 7,000 damage per turn. Which it'll actually take a while because he has 100k health now that we used uh, Nice of the round. I did just use my 8 inch cannon. Two of them. 16 inches of cannon. Rather me use a right arm? Right arm actually hits everything. Dude, let's throw some grenades. He'll never see it coming. How's he how's he gonna come back from that, honestly? Uh-oh. His big strong attack! This is the problem with trying to burst his stomach. If you don't take out the core or the magics. He can start using Stigma. And Stigma is actually pretty annoying. It gives you slow poison. Usually does a big amount of damage. Oh, yeah. Throw another one. Give him another one. Oh, yeah. Throw all the money! This fight takes a lot less time if you don't kill things, because it takes so long for him to show me things are dead. Pandora's box, why not? Give me a question mark treatment. Space punctuation. Mm -hmm. 
So I should mention there's a really funny glitch with Pandora's box if you use Pandora's box on the Steam version on this fight. For some reason, there's a weird mechanic where Pandora's box will show hidden enemies. So if you use Pandora's box on enemies with multiple targets, you get like a bunch of copies of that enemy like floating around. It's really wild. And we showed a couple weeks ago what happens when you use Pandora's box on Palmer. <laughs> it uh, may or may not turn him into a certain vehicle. That that's probably <laughs> that's probably the wildest glitch in the game. I think like if I had to pick one thing, that's uh, probably it. That's probably the wildest glitch. If you had told me that was a thing, I would have said no. It's not like there's no way that's real. You know what? Gotta give him the goblin punch. Gotta show him what's up. Red 13 is very close to Lucky 7s. Cloud, mad, jeez. Calm down. Now we're talking. Holy crap, the damage. <laughs> I not expect that much damage. Memeing? I never meme. I always do very important fights very seriously and never do any kind of memes at all. I never would do that. Wow, I tried to throw him a potion and he dies. I was trying to help you, dude. Whatever. He's a jerk anyways. His tires are flat. favorite part. Too fast. Yo, old Bento! Thank you for the 10 gifted subs in the chat. Give some love to old Bento. Thank you so much, my man. So, uh... This fight is... His AI is completely fixed. You always know what he's gonna do. Depending on where his health is and what turn he's on. He always casts wall first. That's why I immediately cast D-Spell. I actually want to use that. Holy crap, that damage. Where's my keys, Sephiroth? This is a physical attack. Nice block. Where's my keys? Set for Wolf.
All right, my ultimate attack. Let's go. Boom! Oh, we'll never survive this. What you gonna do now? Nothing. That's right. We've been out, outdone. And a goblin punch damage. Holy cow. No, not the frog. Yeah, so this fight's actually gonna take a while because he has super health from us using Knights of the Round. Go, frog! But that's fine because I wanted to see him do some stuff, especially this. So most people know this, but in case you didn't know it, allow me to ruin it for you. <laughs> uh, this attack cannot kill you. It's percentage based. I just thought that was so wild, because like this is his ultimate attack, but yeah, it can't kill you. Now, having said that, it's still extremely strong, and usually it's not this that kills you, but the next attack. But just saying, it's it's kind of weird that, like, this <laughs> can't kill you. If you have two health, it won't kill you. Is that a donut? Yeah, he uses this every time he goes up. It's what comes after this that's dependent on how much HP he has. But yeah, it's always five or six turns, whatever it is, and then this. So he can use it multiple times. He probably will use it multiple times in this fight. And it's funny because he, like, destroys the universe and then he does it again. Like, you want to see me destroy the universe? You want to see me do it again? Also, fun fact about this attack, it's coded as a summon. I think particularly so that you get this effect where you can't, like, throw stuff. But yeah, in the game code, it's coded as a summon. So, uh... First of all... We're going to do that. And this. And then one of the most uh, overlooked items or spells in the game, Resist. Resist is incredibly good. Resist makes uh, not having ribbons not a problem. I do believe D-Spell actually does get rid of Resist, though. But he casts it on himself to get rid of his slow. Which I think that's actually a strat if you want him to not uh, D-Spell you. If you give him slow, he'll D-Spell himself instead, and then you won't get D-Spelled. Yeah, Vaccine basically just gives you Resist. Red 13 angry! I was gonna say don't hit Red 13, but Cloud's gonna block no matter what. <laughs> Dirt chunks out of nowhere. 
Holy! That was some damage. I don't even know why that did so much damage. Cloud doesn't have any thing affecting his strength. He's just a high level. It's holy cow. Cloud man. <laughs> I think Flamethrower will be good. He's probably weak against fire. He's got a lot of feathers. Because he has that super HP boost, I actually don't know if he's low enough to do uh, Heartless Angel here. <laughs> he's flying type. Should use Thunder. Yeah, I think a few Mantra Magics should do it. Use Bahamut Zero to finish off the Earth after Supernova. And that's the only right choice, I think. I'm never gonna say no to Bahamut Zero. Think of the thousand bits, CJ! Yeah, fun fact, uh, Albert Einstein actually played Final Fantasy VII and used those formulas to come up with relative, rel relatively, rel relatively good science. That's what I meant to say. Not relativity. Relatively good science. Albert Einstein actually did the first Final Fantasy VII speedrun. That's true. Yeah, back in 1905. On Speed Demos Archive. <laughs> Still the world record holder. No one's ever beat him. <laughs> you think Buganagan's watching this in the observatory? Just watching every individual planet explode? I should have waited to use that so I could mime it and do double all creation. So if he's gonna Heartless Angel, he'll do it right now. I need it. So he's pretty low now. Time for my finishing maneuver. Never mind, it's not on this one. Time for my finishing maneuver. Matra magic mime. Let's go. He'll never see it coming. Matra magic. Oh crap, he's gonna cast that on us. Jerk. <laughs> Cloud's like, no, you didn't. We did it. So like I said, if you kill him with the Vincent Mug, it has to be with Mug, the damage from Mug, it skips this. I always love this. 
so epic. Still holding with a 500 bit CJ. Appreciate it, my man. I um I remember I timed eight Knights of the Round counters once. Magic counters. Or I think it was maybe sneak attack actually. Eight sneak attack Knights of the Rounds. I forget what it was, but it was like half an hour or something. <laughs> it was really long. This is all we could do. Wait, what about Holy? What's gonna happen to the planet? That, I don't know. Isn't the rest up to the planet? You're right. We've done all that we can do. Alright, everyone. It's no use thinking about it. We'll leave all our worries here. Let's go home proud. I don't know if Yuffie's going home at all. There she goes. What happened? I feel it. What? He is still here. Still... Cloud? He's laughing. That sound effect was a bit different on the PS1 version than it is the Steam version. Yo, CJ, thank you for the five gifted subs as well, man. Thank you so much. So we do a lot of theory crafting as to what this actually is. If this is Cloud going into his mind and destroying Sephiroth in his mind. Or if he's actually, like, killing final Sephiroth here. I don't... I think it's kind of up in the air, really. I, I feel like this is his mind, but I would be willing to accept the other argument. But to me, this is his mind. This is him finishing off Sephiroth in his own head. Uh, some interesting stuff about this fight. It's impossible to lose. Uh, even if you cheat, it's pretty hard to lose. <laughs> I had to, like, cheat really hard to lose this fight. Um, Sephiroth only has one attack, and he does percentage damage. And he also has one HP. So, anything you do will kill him, but you only have two options. Either Omni Slash or let him hit you, and then you counter and win. Actually, it might be zero, I forget. It's one or zero. That's such a, like, creepy look. I always thought it was really creepy that that's where it ends. Like, it's spooky all the way up to the end, you know? But it gets better, because the ending is amazing. So he's surrounded by Lifestream here, so I almost feel like this is kind of showing that he was in his consciousness, kind of like before when he was in his consciousness with the Lifestream. So that was like him erasing Sephiroth from his consciousness. Lifestream? But maybe not. You can interpret it a lot of different ways. This could also be him, like, releasing Aerith or releasing Holy. But to me, this is Aerith pulling him out of his consciousness just like she did before.
Oh god, the lag. Uh oh, hope the whole scene isn't like this. PS2, get it together. There we go. <laughs> An answer from the planet. The promised land. I think I can meet her there. Yeah, let's go meet her. Actually, I actually haven't really, like, talked about the Promised Land for a while, so it's kind of cool that it randomly starts talking about it now, but... Hey, where is everyone? Hey! We chillin'. I'm glad you're all safe. They all seem to be safe, too. But now what are we going to do? Holy should be moving soon. And that means this place will... Oh, Lady Luck, don't fail me now. Yeah, so how does this work? I don't know. <laughs> how do you park it like this and then get out? Yeah, Lady Luck line is great. Yeah, we don't need those pieces. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I want to fly that thing. That thing looks sweet. Did I show the window in Calm that you can look out? I forget if I showed it. I always remember it when I see this scene. The flower girl? I don't know why she says that. Just gets a feeling. I'll have to remember to show that next week. Actually, I might be able to show it real quick. So anyway, that doesn't look good. <laughs> you really hate to see that. That picture of Cosmo Canyon with the meteor in the background is super cool. I also really like this shot. There's so many, like man, they really were just showing off. Every picture of every M FMV is like a, you could take a picture of it and make it a background. It's wild. It's just so cinematic. Wait a dang minute, what's gonna happen to Midgar? We can't let that happen. I had everyone take refuge in the slums. But the way things are now... It's too late for Holy. Meteor is approaching the planet. 
Holy is having the opposite effect. Forget Midgar. We've got to worry about the planet. I'm not exactly sure what he means by it's having the reverse effect. More of just like it's not enough. What's that? So to me, this kind of has like a lot of implication because this is the planet working together with Holy. This is the planet working together with the ultimate power of the Ancients. Together they save everyone. Or at least save the planet. So there's a lot of nuance there. It's coming. Okay, but where'd your nose go, Marlene? Did Omira steal it? Another great picture here. Gives me chills. <laughs> Gives me chills every time. So good. The music, the face, the way the game started, the way the game ends. Gets me every time, man. So good. Yeah, you know, I never hear I never hear this game in contention for like best video game ending. And maybe it's just nostalgia, but I always thought the ending of this game was so well crafted. There's just so much nuance in everything that happens in the end. And then also we don't see what happens. Leaves it up to interpretation. Uh, this final song here is incredible. I, I don't see enough people talking about this final song. But, uh, it's really, really good. So I'm gonna let it play out.
Bravo, bravo.
Alright, there it is. So, a lot of things I wanted to say during the credits, but I wanted to let the credits play. Um, yeah, that, that song, I never really realized how good it was. You know, I just always like, oh, credit scene, it's like a mixture of some of the songs, cool. Then I just kind of left it at that, so I wanted to be quiet and like let everyone listen to it, because I think it's like, so it, it deserves more than it gets. The way that it like gets quiet after some of the songs, like the best part is when it gets quiet right before Prelude. It actually feels like the song's over and it's going to like repeat or the credits are about to end. And then the prelude starts building up and you're like, oh, so good. So I just, I really like that song. Um, I saw, I saw Mavic say you must really, <laughs> he must be planning the fact that you always end at the end of streams. Yeah, I don't know. It's wild. I mean, I kind of planned it this time because I knew it was going to take about two hours. So I just went for it. But yeah, it always seems like we end right at the right times. Um... Yeah, man, the whole game still, the whole ending still, like, gets me every time. I, like, can't. <laughs> I can barely talk during it. It gets me, like, so emotional. It's just something about it that hits so hard every time. So, uh, what do you guys think? The ending? Is everyone alive? Did Holy keep humanity alive? Or did Holy take out humanity because it was their fault in the first place all this happened. I love that we don't know. And I remember when Advent Children came out, I was really salty because I'm not, I wasn't necessarily a believer in the Armageddon theory that everyone dies, but I loved the fact that we didn't know. And Advent Children took that away from us, you know what I mean? I think part of the beauty of the ending is that we probably know that humanity's still alive, but we don't know for sure. And that's what's so great about it. It's It leaves it open to interpretation. You could be 99% sure that humanity is saved, but there always is that 1% that you're like, but maybe Holy did take him out, you know? So it's such a beautiful ending in that way. It's not just a closed book. Um, so I, I always loved it for that. Uh, I saw someone ask... Who did uh, Red 13 mate with? Because he's supposed to be the last of his kind. That's actually explained in Before Crisis. Um, there's another Red 13 uh, who's a girl, and her name is Dinah. And it's implied that he probably finds her. Because uh, they're like a love interest, but then Red 13 gets captured and she runs away and she, he never sees her again. So it's implied that he probably found Denna somewhere. But we don't know for sure, obviously. But it's just, that's probably what they imply. Um, also, one really cool thing in... Uh, on the way to a smile... There's this really great scene with Red 13 and Vincent um, where they meet up and Vincent's really sad because he knows that he will live forever. He's a unkillable vampire that will live forever. And he's sad because all of his friends are going to die, but he's going to live. So one day, everyone's going to be dead, but he's still going to be living alone. And Red 13 comes up and he says, well, I'll be living for longer than them. I'll be living for hundreds of years. So let's meet in Midgar every year. And so it's implied that that's where Red 13's going, is he's going to meet Vincent in that scene 500 years later. So that's really cool. And I love stuff like that because it adds to the game without retconning anything. Because 
sure, maybe he's not going to meet Vincent, but it's cool to think that maybe he is, right? So that's cool. I always liked that. And I think, um... You think it was the opposite? I'll have to look it up. Either way, they both agree to meet there. Uh, and they're both they're both sad, I, I remember that. I don't remember whose idea it was to meet. Maybe it was Vincent's idea to meet. But regardless, yeah, they both meet there. I think that was most everything. There was, there was a question. Even if you never learn Omni Slash in the main game, he'll use it in that fight. Was it meant to be a cool reveal? Probably. They just wanted to use it. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's cool. We don't want to have it be too much of a secret. I mean, that's pretty iconic. That final Omni Slash is always pretty iconic. And it made Omni Slash more iconic than it would have been because normally only a couple people would have saw it. A couple people would have unlocked it and saw it. I think that alone made Omni Slash one of the most like iconic special moves ever. I thought it was I honestly I think it might even be cooler if that's the only time you use it, right? It's cool that you can unlock it and use it, but I think it's cooler if you don't get it throughout the game and then that's the one and only time you use it. That makes it really cool. If this game had DLC, do you think they would sell you another disc or a memory card with the added content on it? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it'd have to be another disc if it was on PS1. They could put a game on a memory card. Well, I guess they could nowadays, but... Livestream, thank you so much for the bits. Appreciate it, my man. I think that was everything I wanted to say about the ending. I'm sure there's more I can say, but... I love this, I love this screen here. And this goes back to what I was saying, this version of Prelude is so good. Every time I launch the game and I hear it, I get reminded of how good it is. And it's so great here as a final screen. So we do have a lot of stuff to get to next week. This is not the end of Final Fantasy VII in depth. Um, we're gonna do a whole post game episode next week. Uh, episodes. We'll do a full... We should be able to do a full four hours. Because I want to do Chocobo stuff. I want to look into some other stuff. We gotta do Alto Weapon. We gotta do The Forest. Um, we gotta do Ruby Weapon. We gotta do Gold Saucer. All sorts of cool stuff we can do. Um, so yeah, we'll make four hours out of it next week. So next week will be the true final week of this playthrough, but I'm glad we were able to to finish the main game and talk about the ending and everything. Um, I do have a bit of news for everyone, a bit of a surprise for all of you in terms of Fantathon. So I might as well tell you now before we go do, we'll, we'll end with the calm window if I can, I should, I should have a save on the world map. Um, so we should be able to go do that real quick. But first, I have a little bit of a surprise for everyone. So let me quickly pull it up here. So, since we have officially finished Final Fantasy VII, at least the main game, it's time to close the vote on our bonus games. So if we jump over to, let's do, that should be fine. So, uh, if we look at the bonus game voting right now, Final Fantasy X-2 is the clear winner. Uh, oh yeah, let me turn that down, thank you. So, Final Fantasy X-2 is the clear winner so we will be playing Final Fantasy X-2 after Final Fantasy X. We're gonna, we're gonna skip this. We're gonna go right to Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, we're doing Final Fantasy VII post-game next week, so Final Fantasy VIII will be two weeks from now. And once we finish Final Fantasy X, we will go into Final Fantasy X-2 before we get into Final Fantasy XI. Now, 
I have a bit of surprise. Bit of a surprise for everyone. Um, because I've been thinking about this over the last couple weeks. And uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, as you can see, is way, way ahead of Dirge of Cerberus and the rest of the, the runner-up games. And I wanted to do something special for all of you because it's been such an amazing journey up to this point already. Um, and so I decided some things. So, first of all, if we let this go now and we take Final Fantasy X-2 out, uh, Tactics is pretty much the clear winner. Uh, Dirge of Cerberus would have to make quite the push in order to catch up with Final Fantasy Tactics. And uh, this whole thing, if you don't know, we kind of talked about this when we started the marathon. Um, but I did not want this to be a fundraiser at all. Uh, the idea behind the votes is that most of them are free. You use them with channel points. Uh, you can donate for uh, votes, but it's more of like uh, if you were already donating, you can put in a hashtag and get some votes. I didn't expect anyone to donate specifically for votes because most of the votes are free. Um, and I do not want anyone spending their life savings to try to get Dirge of Cerberus to catch up to Final Fantasy Tactics. This is just for fun. It's just to get these games into Fantathon. I'm sure we will play all these games eventually down the road. So I don't want anyone dropping their bank account to try to get any of these games to catch up to Final Fantasy Tactics. That's... I don't want that to happen. So, I want you to support within your own means and support the show if you want to support the show. Not because of that. So, uh, here's what we're going to do. We are going to take away Final Fantasy X-2 because they won... They get to be the, the first bonus game for sure. Definitely not changing that. However, we are going to throw in Final Fantasy Tactics. We're going to throw Final Fantasy Tactics out of the vote officially. And it is officially going right here. After Final Fantasy XII, we are officially playing Final Fantasy Tactics. It's a done deal. Final Fantasy X-2 will be first, because they won. But after Final Fantasy XII, we'll be playing Final Fantasy Tactics. Now, I think we can all agree that more Fantathon is better Fantathon. So, I am going to be opening up a third bonus game. That's right, a brand new full game added to Fantathon. And it's going to be between all the rest of the games. So now, all of these games that have been trailing behind Dirge of Cerberus 13-2, they all have a chance now. I'm telling you, there's a chance. <laughs> they could potentially actually win. Dirge of Cerberus is in the lead now. So these two will be gone, and there will be a third bonus game. And we're going to be playing the third bonus game. Actually, not here. I'm going to move it up here to before Final Fantasy 15. I was thinking about it, and I think it'd be cooler if we ended on Final Fantasy XV instead of, like, a random game. I want the final game to be like, we did it, we finished Fantathon. I don't want the final game to be, like, a random side game. So, we're gonna do the bonus game here, and then we're gonna end with 15 or 16 if it's out by then, which it probably will be. So, it's probably gonna be bonus game 15, 16. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna move that up. That way it's fair. And also... It'll be uh, two games before the bonus game. So it'll be 10, 10, 2, and then two games, and then bonus game, and then two games, and then bonus game. So it works nicely. It's two games, and then a bonus game each time. And that's that. So an extra game added to the marathon. Tactics and X2 are both being played. It's going to be exciting. Hope you guys enjoy. I hope that's a good idea for everyone. And now, before we jump off, we got a calm window to check out. So I thought I had shown this, but in case I didn't, I always thought this was really neat. And a little bit of a story about this, not really a story, but uh, no one that I knew knew this existed 
And I remember watching a video from Garland the Great, one of the great old speedrunners and challenge runners of the game, still challenge runs to this day. Um, he made a video a couple of years ago that was just like, hey, did anyone know this is here? <laughs> and I remember seeing everyone comment on it and just be like, no, I didn't ever know that was there. And I was the same way. I was like, I had no idea this thing existed. And I don't know if it's specifically supposed to be the window that Marlene looks out. But I kind of think it is. And I think it's a really, really cool little nod to the final cutscene. Gotta put in this too. Oh, no. I hope it works. <laughs> I had to reset again. Come on, baby, give me work, please. Don't make me reset. Yeah, let's go. The game functions correctly. <laughs> I can't believe it. So I believe it's this house. So check this out. It's a very... I think it's this. I think it's here. I hope it's here. Is it here? Might not be here. Let's try the other house. Nah, I don't think it's this one. No, it's not this one. Which house is it? It's not that one. It's the first house, but the other stairs. Over here? Ah, that's where it is. Okay, so you come up here, there's the Peacemaker, and that definitely seems to be it, right? Well, if you look out this window, and you have to actually hit circle, you get this view. Never ever knew this was a thing until I saw it. <laughs> Never ever knew, yeah. And you can move Cloud too. Yeah, isn't that wild? And I mean, I'm pretty sure this is where Marlene is in the cutscene. So it's like a shout out. <laughs> it looks really goofy. It looks really goofy with PS1 Cloud too, because he's not even rendered different. So he's got the goofy one eyeball. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? We have that emote, the SpongeBob looking out, this, looking out his window, this emote. It kind of reminds me of that. We should have like a version of that. <laughs> should have a version of that cloud looking out his window. How's, how's this for a new Franker Z emote? <laughs> Just cloud looking longingly out of his window. <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. <laughs> let down your spikes. There's some kind of alternate universe where Cloud lets down his long spiky hair and then... The prince can't get up the hair because it's too spiky. <laughs> Alright. Well, we'll leave it there for today. 
but uh, we shall be back at this next week. We'll do all the post game. We'll do Chocobos. We'll do uh, Ultimate Weapon and Ruby Weapon. We'll do the Secret Forest, and we'll do anything else that sounds fun. And uh, yeah, we'll just enjoy the rest of the game that there is to enjoy. I want to thank all of you for being here, though, for today and for the main part of Final Fantasy VII in depth. It's been such an amazing, amazing journey, and uh, I wouldn't do it with anyone else. So thank you. We gotta say goodbye to YouTube now. So YouTube, thank you so much for watching in depth, the in depth playthrough of Final Fantasy VII. I've appreciated all your comments and all of your support and all your corrections on stuff and any fun trivia facts you've thrown out in the comments. I've really enjoyed reading them. So thank you. We'll see you in the next episodes of Final Fantathon. Peace out.